today I bring you a review of the Post Birthday World by Lionel Shriver. Firstly, I feel we should take a second to admire this edition because it is absolutely stunning. I love these. Um, they've got others in hers, which I'm definitely going to be getting in the future. Um, this is my third Lionel Shriver. I have read We Need to Talk About Kevin, her most popular and also Double Fault, which is one of her earlier novels. I have to say, this is funnily enough, sort of a mix between the two, and it was perfection, really, for me. Um, it's very, very good. I really do enjoy Lionel Shriver's writing style. It's quite dense and quite difficult at times. It's not as easy read as you might think it would be, but this was such an interesting concept, which I know has also been done in Life After Life, by Kate Atkinson, which I also own, but I looked at the dates of publication and this came first, so I wanted to read this first. Basically, this follows the idea of, basically like sliding doors, what would happen if you took one path or the other, and it follows both and sort of the outcome of both. So we have, in the beginning we just have one chapter one, one chapter two, and we're learning that our main character, Arena, and her partner, Lawrence, for the past sort of however many years have ended up having dinner on the birthday of their friend Ramsey Acton who is a famous snooker player um, and one year Lawrence is away and Irina is faced with the predicament that she's never been alone with Ramsey she doesn't know if they'd have anything to talk about she thinks it'll be awkward but she still feels as though she has to go because it's become a thing um, that they have to have dinner every every year on his birthday. Um, when this tradition starts, Ramsey is actually married to his work partner Jude. However, over the years, he becomes divorced, so Irina feels even more like she has to do something else, he'll be on his own. She puts it off and puts it off, and then Ramsey actually calls her and makes an arrangement to go out for dinner, which she's really nervous about, but actually, once she gets there, she really starts to enjoy herself. Um, she finds that she can drink more when Lawrence isn't there to sort of tell her that she can't she's got to stop drinking and whatever else and at the end of the evening Ramsay invites her back to his house to get stoned and she goes and things ensue from there there is a moment when they are leaning he is helping her learn how to play pool and they are leaning over the table and she turns around and she realizes that he's very attractive and this is where we find our split in one story Irina kisses Ramsay and we go from there in another story she doesn't kiss him and we go from there what I found very interesting about this was that it didn't follow the path that I thought it was going to follow at all um it very much looked at the idea that there is no fate um and that whatever path we take it is the right one because it's the one we had taken but also there's going to be ups and downs on either road we can't say what if because there will always have been bad points and high points and ultimately we will get to where we are going irrelevant of what path we take um and it also looks at sort of relationships and love and the dilemmas with that um one thing i did find slightly irritating i mean from that point when the split happens we get two chapter threes two chapter fours so on and so on the first one being in the world where Arena has kissed Ramsey and the second one being in the world where she hasn't and what I found was that in the world where she had kissed Ramsey I absolutely felt heartbroken for Lawrence I thought he was a wonderful character and I actually at one point I read a chapter just before I left for work and it ended with Lawrence crying and I went to work feeling really sad because it was so just emotional and I, I really felt for Lawrence and I thought he was a lovely lovely man in the world where she doesn't kiss Ramsay, I actually didn't like Lawrence. I felt like his character was changed because of that. And I think it kind of jolted me because he's ultimately the same character. It's just a parallel universe. But then again, I do think that works because obviously we are a result of our situation. And in the world, <coughs> in the world where Arena didn't kiss Ramsay, Lawrence was complacent he didn't have a reason to be wonderful to her he he was like all of us he didn't appreciate what he had whereas in the world obviously where he was losing what he had he did appreciate it and he did realize what how good it was so there was that that slightly bothered me but at the same time I can understand that that would be plausible and I completely get it um, this very much looks at sort of also complacency versus excitement and sort of the 
parallels between those two things and it really made me sad at times it was really quite cutting and close to home for I think a lot of people this feeling that you don't realize how comforting your sort of creation of a world is how comforting your routine and your home life is until you don't have it anymore and I think that's very true or until something traumatic happens and then you realize how good you had it in the beginning um but it's very very good made better by Lionel Shriver's writing which I will read you a bit of now because I read this and completely was just I was in love. This was near the beginning and I just, this is what sold me on this story completely. I don't know, she said, and with genuine puzzlement. She truly didn't understand why, when she had such a powerful motivation not to rock the boat, she would keep being so provocative, or on an evening when she was desperate not to attract close examination, she would behave in an erratic, irritable fashion, sure to bring maximum scrutiny to bear. Did she want him to know? Maybe she was forcing him to play a parlour game like Botticelli. I'm a famous person and I, my name begins with a big scarlet A. Are you dead? As of tonight, to my marrow. Are you female? All too female, it turns out. Where were you last night at five in the fucking morning? Only yes or no, that question is cheating. You're one to talk about cheating. Or maybe Lawrence was supposed to play hangman on the back of his conference programme and since he would never in a million years guess that she'd chosen faithless hussy, proceed to noose himself, letter by letter. Need I say more? Definite recommendation. <laughs>